enter into the podcast where we discuss the odd, unusual, and obscure. You're here with the Bad Wanderer and Traveler Accessible. <laughs> uh, I hope that doesn't become our thing. I, I was kind of going to want to make it our thing. Uh, I thought we were going to do Topher and Ronnie. Ooh, Topher and Ronnie. Yeah. I think we should just go back and forth. So we get three identities and we can just switch back and forth. Depending. Yeah. We should probably use our true names when we're interviewing people, but uh-huh. the other episodes, anything goes. <laughs> you know what's funny? So, uh, unrelated to anything at all, when I'm writing up our episodes on the blog, um, I say we, us, me, like, you know, I use yeah. that. But when I'm writing the descriptions for the actual episodes, I always write Aaron and Chris in third person. Yeah, and I've just followed suit with you doing that. Well, I kind of feel like the description of the episodes that are on the podcast platforms, people might wander into that. But if they're on our site reading our blog, they're probably already somewhat familiar with right, us. Right, right. So, uh, when, so, listeners, if you're reading our blog, that's, that's us talking directly to you. Yes. Esotericofthepodcast.com. I love my fans like Arnold Palmer loves golf. Yeah. Which uh, was a segue. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I want to do that from now on, too. Identify segues. <laughs> Identify. <laughs> All segues must be identified. Am I supposed to shake the thing? So, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I love how he laughs. So our uh, esoteric beverage tonight is a uh, tall boy. What's, is it? Oh, it's Arizona. From Arizona Tea. This is the uh, half and half iced tea and lemonade, strawberry flavored. I feel like that's thirds. Yeah. Well, the 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 esoteric part is the strawberry because Arnold Palmer half and half is like, like. That's the thing. Yeah, that's like a thing. Okay. But like the strawberry, I, I haven't heard of the strawberry before. At least the grocery store I used to work in didn't carry it. Okay. This is this is definitely a convenience store beverage. Yeah. As we mentioned in the previous episode with the whole pandemic 2020, we're limited. We actually did uh, make an excursion to go to a local Brazilian supermarket to try to get some, um, what would be for us, esoteric beverages yeah. straight from Brazil. And I know for a fact, because I've shopped there, um, that they have some strange stuff. Yeah, we were, we were about an hour too late. Yeah, because they get distracted by things today. By Greg Proops. By Greg Proops, Yes. Mm-hmm. That Greg Proops. He's yes. a distractor. Which I think you guys heard last week. And if you didn't, check it out. Yeah. We get this whole like side hustle going. Famous folks. Yeah. Which there should be an episode coming up. Right. Let's try this beverage. Yeah, anyway. We can, we have time to plug at the end of the episode. So <laughs> you're saying no, don't shake. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's it's tea. It's not carbonated. But like I don't know with cans anymore. Okay. It's pretty satisfying for a non-carbonated. All right. You want to sniff the can or you want to wait? Well, I'm not sniffing the can. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll just I'll sniff the, the cup. Yeah, I may just sniff the last bottle because it was... So bad? Yeah. It was cloying. Ooh. I like them. So I want to know when they stopped making 12-ounce cans of stuff. This is part of the reason why we have an obesity problem in America. Do you really need a tall boy? Of lemonade versus beer? It's probably better to have lemonade. Well, yeah, but any, I mean, really? Like, look at that. Is this one serving? I bet you it's not. It do you know? Is. Do you know how many servings are in this can? Four. Three. Oh. So, if you look at... I have to take my glasses off for this. If you're concerned about your caloric intake, it says amount per serving 50, but there's three servings, so there's 150 calories, which yeah. I feel is like not a lot. It's not. And how much sugar is in there? Or sodium? Uh, zero sodium. Okay, well. Uh, total carbohydrates is 5%. 14 grams of sugar, so there's actually... This actually doesn't sound that bad. Forty-two. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're destroying your case. And you right get now. seventy-five percent of your RDA of vitamin C. So, um, never mind. 
So let's enjoy a healthy beverage. <laughs> you go. Of Arnold in a Palmer. Large quantity. Well, it's just tea. It's just it's well, water it, it's, and tea leaves. It's not just tea. It's half and half. It's tea and lemonade. Oh, that strawberry is strong. Mm. It has a strawberry bouquet. <laughs> it's a fruit. It's, it's a, a fruity fruit. bouquet. All right. Mm, there we go. Mm. It doesn't taste as much strawberry as I would have imagined. Mm, but I like that. I will say, the half and half with the lemonade, it does seem to mellow out the tea. Mm. Even though, like, lemonade's fairly acidic. Yeah, it it kind of works well. It balances out um, pretty well. Uh, the tea is mm. there, but it doesn't doesn't stand out. My only problem, and I've noticed this with uh, iced teas before, is I, I have a strong desire to quaff. If um, there's no... Oh, I forgot what the word meant. <laughs> if yes, there's, um, we went over this. When, when there's no carbonation to slow me down. Um, For those at home, uh, quaff is to open your mouth and take in a mass amount of something. Nice. Sorry, I got distracted by that. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Arnold Palmer, half hmm. and half strawberry. Um, what do you think? What are you going to give it? Hmm. I would put this probably at about a seven and a half. And I would go higher. Just iced tea is really usually not my bag. Um, um, but I like it. I'm going to go eight one. Eight one. Eight one. It's pretty good. I don't know if I'd get it again if I was thirsty, but it's uh, it's up there. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, if I was in the mood for an iced tea, I'd probably just go with the uh, age old Lipton. But um, I'm liking this, and I, I like the strawberry. Yeah, I get brisk. Which I I think they're Lipton. So I'm not yeah, sure. It might be. So good job, Arnold Palmer. Yeah. Okay, today's album. Uh, we are listening to Singing Bones, which is the sixth album from husband and wife duo the handsome family oh so kind of like the white stripes but not yeah though they never pretended to be anything other than uh husband and wife because i know jack and <laughs> them pretended to be brother and sister um yeah. yes uh brett and rennie sparks uh, formed the handsome family in chicago uh they've been around for a few years um the album that we're listening to is from 2003 um yeah, the band formed in 1993. So I first became aware of the Handsome Family. Uh, they were involved with uh, Jim White. Uh, had a movie made. It was a documentary about um, the South and the Wrong Eyed Jesus album uh, mm -hmm. that the BBC produced. And the Handsome Family was featured in that. And I really dug them. They only had one song, which is actually not on this album. Um, but it's a really cool song. So... I started listening to them. Uh, they got some fame in 2016. No, not so. I'm sorry. In 2014, uh, when the first season of True Detective used uh, Far From Any Road as the theme song. So That's you might cool. recognize that. that. That got a lot of got a lot of play. Okay. Um, I can tell you that uh, my son does not like this album. Uh, he's got strong opinions about it. I tried to get him to come down and join us. Um, to weigh in on it, but he, he wasn't game. <laughs> so the first track is called The Forgotten Lake. So let's uh, give that a spin. Come with me to the forgotten lake Where covered wagons and the wings of missing So this is definitely uh, different than some of the other music that we've listened to on the show before, and uh, it's, a, it's a nice little change up. Um, the the deep voice I like a lot. Oh my god, I love that voice. I, I don't know what it. I think it's partly because it's it just sounds nice. But yeah. um, again, you know, and I know I've said multiple times I'm no singer and musician. But if I, I, I do know that if I were to <laughs> sing, I would sing in a deep register. So like I can. I sound okay to myself singing along to these songs. Um, yeah. So I like that. Um, I will say, 
that one of the most beautiful instruments, in my opinion, is the steel pedal guitar. Oh, yes. I just love it. Love it! So sweet. This song's got like a dreamy quality to mm. it that I like. Absolutely. Um, so they're sort of... Uh, it's a blend of traditional country and bluegrass. Uh, um, they're part of uh, what I would consider alt country. Is I'm not a huge country fan, and every time I say that, I I feel like I need a caveat because I listen to a lot of what would be considered country music. Mm-hmm. Not a fan of contemporary country. Like, um, I don't. I can't even think of the top of my head of any of the shit that they've put out right now. Yeah, I hate that too. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of any of that. But stuff right. like the Handsome Family, uh, 16 Horsepower, um, or if you want to go back to like Johnny Cash or uh, Hank Williams, like I, mm. I dig that um, Merle Haggard. I could go on. Yeah, um, I'll stop. I could go on, <laughs> but I won't. But I won't. So the next track is Gale with the Golden Hair. Gale and I shot our empties with an old her golden hair went flying like a wild brush so it starts off nice yeah him and gail Mm -hmm. sitting in the desert drinking some beers sitting on their car and then she goes crazy and runs away screaming into the night never to be found again and that's the story (laughs) that's the story I don't know why it and, and like not even close, but like this vibe reminds me of a song that my sixth grade teacher made us listen to. It's called Patches. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember who the artist was, but essentially what happens with the song is he's like madly in love with this woman, and then uh, her parents are like, "You guys can't date anymore." Um, so then she kills herself. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to kill myself, too. And then they both kill themselves. Damn. Yeah. I got to figure out who sings that. Patches. The sixth grade teacher made you listen. Yeah. Yeah, she so did. Were you guys reading, like, Romeo and Juliet at the time? Or? Not even close. We were um, we were actually studying uh, decades, different decades. So we were, okay. we'd be going through, like, 30s, 40s, and 50s. And this, we finally get to the 60s. And she brought in a bunch of the records that she had. Because mm-hmm. she was, I think, at the time in her 50s. So that would have been... Um, she thinks she was born in the late fifties or something like that. At the time, that was the age range. So, um, she brought in a bunch of her records, and that's one she had. Like I remember, we listened to one. And it was like an awful cracked record. Everyone's like, "Can we change it? Listen to something else." She goes, "That's my dad singing to my mom." We're gonna listen to the whole thing all the way through. And we're like, "Oh, sorry." <laughs> oh, yeah, hey, okay. okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's like it. It sounds a lot like that song uh, to me, which I thought was funny. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, that was a uh, that was Gail with the. Get with the, I'm sorry. Go oh, get with the golden hair. Yes. Um. Okay. Uh, the next song is 24 Hour Store. Hmm. So let's listen to that. Oh, no one hears a singing bone, and no one sees the cry. Theremin. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like, I think for me, that's a measure of how cool a song is. If, oh, yeah. If you hear some theremin going If you on use there. some esoteric instruments, I think so. Yeah. It took us a second to figure out if it was a singing saw or not from, uh, what was it, a couple weeks ago. When yeah, we did, Neutral um, Milk Hotel. Yeah. But that was definitely a theremin. Yeah. No, that was facts of theremin. I'm going to use... Uh, Millennial slang. There's facts. <laughs> there. So cool. So I kind of picture like a, a haunted Walmart. A haunted Walmart. So you mean like right now with COVID? Or, well, maybe not right now when you're listening to this, but yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting, actually. I, I think listening to this album in juxtaposition to other albums that we've listened to this season. So we have um, bands that are emo, singing about. Um, love or emotional states from their own point of view yeah uh then we've had some more um you know jumping back to neutral milk where you you've got a band whose lyrics are completely um undecipherable for the most part 100 percent thing except for Anne frank yes uh and then we have an album here where it's it's stories 
Yes. Like, you could interpret what's going on behind it if you really want to, but basically right. it's pretty cut and it's a, it's a ballad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so this next song uh, is one of my all-time favorite songs. I love this song. And I'm going to tell you right now uh, that before the next camping trip, whether it be summer camp or, or a weekend outing, um, you need to learn the guitar on this so that you and I can bust this out uh, because my son hates this song with such a passion. Okay. It's unbelievable. And I, lo I love it. It's a great song. This is called um, Bottomless Hole, um, about a bottomless hole. Okay. And I do see this is the first song that I've seen on Genius that somebody has attempted to annotate the lyrics. Mm -hmm. uh, though the meaning is often debated, it is speculated that the song tells the tale of a man addicted to drugs and his struggles with said drugs. Uh, I, I think simply uh, the song is about obsession. Yeah. Whether that be an addiction or um, physical or mental, it's about obsession. Gotcha. gotcha. So uh, let's listen to Bottomless Hole. Let's do it. We've been filling it with garbage as long as you could count. Kitchen scraps and dead cows, tractors broken down. So I, I do um, think this is more about obsession. Yeah. Than no, for sure, for sure. I like that creaky sound that's in there. Mm. Um, it sounds to me, going with the imagery of the song, like um, I, I don't know you, the the wooden pulley system you would use if you were lowering a tub down. Okay. And it creaking as the the weight of the tub and the person goes further and further down yeah sure okay <laughs> <laughs> until he cuts himself loose falls and falls and falls, and falls. Uh, Nick hates that song mostly because it doesn't rhyme that's his big beef with it Nick doesn't listen to good music then <laughs> no he doesn't I, I would concur with that um, he's got limited um, taste limited he'd probably argue against that <laughs> so that was uh, Bottomless Hole uh, our next song is probably uh, their best known. It's this a, is on the detective show. Yes. Yes. Uh, Far From Any Road. Ah. And it was the theme song for the first season of True Detective. Just the first season? Yeah. Um, it's an anthology show, so each season is a completely different story oh, okay. with different characters. Yeah. Um, so this was in the first one. So um, most people have probably, um, if they're not familiar with the song, have at least heard it. Right. Okay. Cool. So here is uh, Far From Any Road. From the dusty mesa, a looming shadow grows, hidden in the branch. So there's an interesting backstory to this song, hmm. which I wasn't aware of. Uh, apparently, they're singing about this mysterious cactus that blooms once every 10,000 years. And if you look at it, you go crazy. But you look at it anyway. <laughs> uh, it, that reminds me almost of uh, Lot's wife in uh, that thing. Because they're like, don't look back. And she's like, ah. Yeah, I'm looking back. Turn into a pillar of salt. And it makes sense. So, I mean, they use this in True Detective, which was about, you know, the, the whole idea of obsession. Um, detectives obsessing over maybe they're more personal issues rather than a sense of right and wrong right um, and somebody out in the in the desert um, going crazy mm. and they also mention uh, in here which I thought was kind of interesting um, where was it there's a line uh, I came walking with the wind to catch the cactus bloom uh, Rennie Sparks, who's uh, the female and sings this line, is talking about Jimson weed. And apparently, Jimson weed uh, goes back to Jamestown. Uh, there is some psychedelic ingredient in the um, in the weed, and it would get into people's drinking water and, like, drive whole towns crazy. I heard that being uh, a thing for um, the cause of the Salem witch trials. It was, uh, what do they call it, ergo, ergot poisoning? 
It's a uh, it's a mold that forms in rye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and it causes. Yeah. Oh, there's that. Uh, there's like a number of different things, but yes, yeah. yeah whole... So I mean, imagine if you go back in time and you don't know about psychedelics, or the existence of such things, and you start seeing weird shit, like. Of course it's yeah, like an elephant time. running down the street in the middle of the work day. <laughs> right? He's going to take a nap and not talk to anybody about it. <laughs> uh, so that was, uh, that was their most well-known song. The uh, next track is If the World Should End in Fire. And if... So there are two songs on this album. This one, If the World could, Should End in Fire, and the last song, If the World Should End in Ice. So if you were... If you had this as an LP... These songs would be the um, end of each side. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, so let's cool. take a listen. If the world should end in fire, the ocean foiling into flame, I will watch the last sunrise and think of all the sunny days. I'm digging that guy's voice. Yeah. Um, I really like the uh, chorus kind of thing that we had going on there. It was pretty cool. Like the uh, it was almost like a barber shop. Hmm. Yeah, it does sort of. Yeah. I mean, you would know better than me. I would. <laughs> I can see where it evokes that. Uh, so the next track is a shadow underneath, and um, it tells a story from what I can tell. Well, I mean, it should probably... I don't know. A woman in an office building <laughs> late at night by herself. <laughs> Let's go with that. A woman in uh, an office building late at night by herself. Yes. Okay. A shadow underneath. Okay. But she felt something waiting A shadow You know, it's interesting. I, I don't think I've ever heard um, such a poetic and lonesome song sung about being in an office building. Mm. This song was nice because you it's one of those things like we kind of had it on in the background. Um, and it was just such a chill vibe. Mm. Do you, I, is that like too... Um, what I want to say like lax to say you know <laughs> yeah it's just one of the things I like about this band like it puts me in sort of a I don't know it's a weird headspace I get when yeah. I get this album on I'm like I'm chilled hmm. um, just thoughtful just I don't know yeah like I and, and this take is a good way like, I could take a nap with the, with it on like and just like feels so good yeah this seems like this like uh, alright I'm gonna come up with a new genre of music it's like hammock music yeah yeah I want to it's be like yacht rock but like oh, hammock rock I hate the term yacht rock I know but, but I get I feel you see where I'm going with it yeah. though hammock rock yeah so we're gonna just oh, ham hammock hawk rock hammock rock pig's feet That's rock sweet uh, this next tune is a little more uh, up tempo Okay. Um, almost like a spiritual kind of. Ooh. Uh, it's called dry bones. Dry bones from the singing bones. That's right. You need dry bones to sing. Old Enoch, he lived to be three hundred and sixty-five. When the Lord came and took him back to heaven alive, I saw, I saw the light from shining, shining. Old Enoch lived to be 365. 365. You know, um, this really nice upbeat folk feel to the song mm -hmm. um, fits in that like kind of countryish genre. I think we kind of established throughout this episode so far. Yeah, it's almost like gospel. I, I I'm, I'm, I could be mistaken, but I think this is an old spiritual. You know, um, we'll, we'll have to listen to it at some point. I'm saying this so that we won't forget. It's reminding of. Um, there's this one man band I'll call it. It's just a guy with a guitar, but mm -hmm. his albums are, um, you know, a whole group of things, and it's uh, the Homeless Gospel Choir. It's one guy. Interesting. Um, and it's it's like a cross between emo and like this kind of stuff. Wow. 
So we'll have to listen to that at some point. That reminds me, like, even more removed. Um, there's this uh, minimalist composer, um, Gavin Bryars. And he has this album called Jesus Blood um, Never Failed Me. And like he, I guess he was walking through London or something, and there was this homeless guy just singing this one refrain from a spiritual. So he recorded it, and then he loops it. And he has an orchestra come in and out um, at various points, and then he has Tom Waits come in and sing in the background. And it's heartbreaking. Mm, um, mm. Amazing, amazing album. Totally off point. Totally off point. <laughs> but homeless, you know, yeah. so there's a connection. Um, so we were just talking um, while we were listening to Dry Bones. The next song um, is called Fallen Peaches. And apparently when I ripped the CD um, so that I could listen on my various devices, for some reason this song cuts out like right three seconds into it. Um, so this could be a first time for me listening to it uh, mm. since I got the CD way back when and God only knows where that even is. <laughs> so here's uh, Fallen Peaches. We came down a black dirt hill Between the rows of blooming peaches And we scattered leaping fawns As we fell into the ditches um, The way that this album, this album, oh my God, this song... <laughs> <laughs> starts off um is very cool i'm thinking that this is a civil war so I, like that's mm. the image i got in the head of going across the field and oh, i could totally see and, that and, and, this does give me that that sort of era of um yeah that's visualization they, gothic american americana yeah i mean I'd, I'd say like you know 1850s ish to like world war one like that era of, of life you know and the um, Brett, the the dude who's singing, mm -hmm. if you see a picture of him, like he totally, you could totally put him in a like, yeah, nineteenth century outfit, and I can see it. Him. I can see it. Cool. That was a cool song. That was a really cool song. Uh, and I enjoyed that. So, like I said, I'm very familiar with this album. I listen to it all the time, but I haven't really heard that song um, in a very very long <laughs> time. So I enjoyed that. Um, the next song is called White Haven. And uh, this is also a ballad, so there's a, there's a story here going on. So let's uh, check that out. E. But one with the evening, gathering timbers Under white elm trees and shadows I saw The darkest of beauties with a basket of chairs Creepy. Uh, uh, yeah. But I do think that the beauty of this album and this song in particular is that you can just kind of put it on the background and it's relaxing until you dig into it a little. Yeah, yeah. And then Atmospheric. it becomes creepy. Yeah. Like I'm picturing in my head, uh, that seems to me like a, um, almost like a fairy tale sort of scenario. Mm. Grim Brothers. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how to word that any better than you just did. Definitely a Grim Brothers feel. I, I feel like it is like a, it tries to paint the narrative of a Disney fairy tale, but it's just dark. Yeah. You know? And it's funny, as you mentioned, like just playing this music in the background, and then, you know, if you sort of pay attention, mm -hmm. there's more going on here. This next song, Sleepy, exactly that. So the first time I was listening to this album, I was just kind of not paying attention, and this song came on, and suddenly, when I heard the lyrics, like, I almost shit my pants. Um, <laughs> because they're singing about... Um, a very specific phenomenon that occurs very rarely called um, sleep paralysis. Oh my God, that's scary as hell. Um, and I've had that happen a couple of times. So I'll, I'll talk a little more after. after I, I had that song. happen last night. Did I tell you? Oh, that? really? Yeah. No. It was scary. Very scary. It is. It's a not, not a. It happened a couple of times. I, I, I didn't go to sleep for Ooh. a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So listen, um, this next track, Sleepy, you'll, you'll hear that experience put into. In this song. I woke up from a sound sleep. They were all around me. Their black eyes shone. Sleep paralysis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was. It's almost as clear as. Um, 
what's his name Magnum talking about um and Frank oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny so I remember um I read an article one time about sleep paralysis um and apparently the a lot of people who think they've been abducted by aliens as which is going on in this song is that's a, a common phenomenon in sleep paralysis it's a, a, a shared uh what's the word i'm looking for hallucination mm-hmm. that people have of um gray men in the room yeah around them um i remember one time having sleep paralysis and i woke up and there were raccoons running around my head and i was trying to get up and scream and i couldn't and then i woke up you say there's a shared experience like that what's what's the drug that does it with the machine elves the dmt oh yeah yeah everyone has the same trip when they do it yeah um, I had read, I, I can't remember if this is the same article or if I was watching something that was talking about alien abductions and apparently they've linked it to, um, electromagnetic radiation. Um, because people that with abduction experiences, a lot of times, like it would be people in a ho- in a apartment building, which doesn't make sense logistically yeah. to get abducted, uh, but they've found evidence of EMP there that um for some reason must be triggering something in the brain Hmm. um cool so crazy yeah so i I remember when the first time i heard this song like i wasn't really paying attention and all of a sudden the the imagery caught me and i was like whoa dude i've gone through that (laughs) crazy um so the next song is uh the song of a hundred toads and i'm not going to say any more than that i thought i thought you (laughs) I thought you said toes for a second. <laughs> Ooh, that's kind of gross. A hundred no. toes. A ah. hundred toads. On my way out to the gold mines, crossing the western hills, me and my little dog Clyde, and a horse named Prancing Bill. I slept on- the way that you put... That made it seem like it was going to be just like a ton of frogs. Just <laughs> um, so that was not that at that, all. That wasn't that at all. <laughs> uh, another little ballad, which is interesting. I was sitting here thinking um, a majority of the albums that we've listened to this season have been um, personal songs. Yeah. You know, uh, bands that are, you know, whether they're emo or they're just, you know, singing about their own stuff, uh, where this album is almost entirely ballads. Mm. Um, which I enjoy. Like, I like storytelling. Yeah. Um, that's one of the, I, I think the difference being, um, and maybe I'm stating the obvious here, is if you're listening to a song that's uh, exploring the the writer's emotions and stuff, that's something that can you can identify with. It might resonate with you. Mm-hmm. Whereas a story, you know, it's less personal. Right. And I enjoy hearing somebody tell a little ditty, but I'm not necessarily putting myself into that. But I like that. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes that's what I want. Exactly. I would. I couldn't agree more. So the uh, the song, uh, the, yeah, the song, the album uh, ends with a bookend. Um, if the world should end in ice, if you remember uh, a number of tracks back, we had "If the world should end in fire," hmm. uh, which would, if you're, if this was an album, that would be the end of side one. So this is probably the end of side two. Yeah, I, I assume it was a vinyl at some point because that probably. would make perfect sense to me. Yeah, the and, and these guys are uh, you know they're an indie they're band so they're probably um, this came out in the two thousand three two thousand three so um, you know CDs and digital formats were definitely a thing but this yeah. was probably yeah initially released on vinyl so let's listen to uh, the last song if the world should end in ice if the world should end in ice in days of endless night I'll let the snowstorms cover me in a blanket of white uh, that, that song hit me really hard because um, as you know um, I was in a barbershop quartet oh yes thing. and that's literally what that sounds like Mm-hmm. And I just had an immediate flashback to like 10 years ago when I first started doing it. <laughs> and I'm the one 10-year-old in there. And everybody else is in there like is between 60 and 90. And um, 
And it's just like that's what it sounded like to me at ten years old. Doesn't yeah. sound like that anymore because you know I'm older. But yeah, um, I had I just had an immediate flashback. Oh, that's cool. Um, you know, if the world was going to end in ice, I wouldn't mind um, right, him singing us out on it because get that like chocolate voice. I feel like ice is better than fire. Yeah, I, I would think like ice cold. You fall asleep. Yeah, you get tired. Whereas fire, like you're screaming in agony. I don't, I don't, I'm happy that I'm not on fire. Like, yeah. every day, I'm thankful that I'm not on fire. <laughs> I, I'm also thankful. <laughs> so that was the album. That was a very nice album. Very, I, that's a, um, pop in the car and just relax album. I really like it. Yeah, and that's actually like 99% of the time when I listen to that album. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm doing. It's good. It's a summertime, driving, um, driving down to Miles Standish. It's oh, driving down to Miles Standish. All right, so the Handsome family. Uh, They are still pretty active. Um, Actually, I was just on their uh, Facebook page earlier today. And, of course, by the time this comes out, um, this podcast or episode comes out, this will be in the past. Um, But they have been doing some online um, concerts. Uh, They also have a playlist that they just popped up on um, Spotify of them doing covers of various songs. Mm -hmm. Some Leonard Cohen. um, Leonard Cohen's good. Yeah. Um, So definitely check out The Handsome Family. Yeah, and I trust me, they're not all men. No. (laughs) Uh, There is a... Yeah, it's a husband and wife duo. Um, So definitely check them out um they have a website too we'll link that up on the Mm. website when we pop up the episode uh so what's coming up oh we have our famous people uh famous i just famous people yes yeah our famous folks friday yeah we Um, have our famous folk um this friday mr colin mockery i believe yes colin mockery of whose line is it anyway yes it is so that's going to be exciting yep and then chris what do we have coming up next week since we decided to change it up and you pick an album Two weeks in a row. Oh, yeah. Um, so, looking at the local scene, uh, we're um, and I'm excited about this because this is another episode where we actually have somebody from the band coming in and talking. Uh, we're going to be reviewing um, something Saturday, and we, their lead singer Aaron Christian is going to join us uh, to talk about the the process of making that album. Yeah, my people talk to his people. He's available, so we're looking forward to having him in and talking. Excellent. So that that should be exciting. Yeah. Um, So make sure you check in Friday uh, for our famous folks and then uh, back in for next Wednesday. And that is also uh, next Wednesday's episode is going to be our final episode for this season. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're going to go into a brief hiatus as we kind of spitball season two because we're um, we love reviewing albums, but we're looking at doing some other esoteric stuff as well. And uh, don't forget also on Sundays, we're still doing our live stream. I believe so. Um, check in with that. Yeah, check us out. Uh, nothing like a live conversation. We're looking for that, uh, you know, immediate feedback. Yeah. Um, we had a, a special guest on one of our last ones. We're going to try to to shake it up and keep that content interesting. So, so thank you for joining us on another week of Esoteric the Podcast, and we will see you this Friday. Don't forget to stop in at EsotericThePodcast.com.